Well, it's good to uh, get back at it today with the players and certainly looking forward to a good week of preparation and uh, then getting to go to Nebraska and, and play a good football team. So we gotta ha we, we got to have a good week, and there's a number of things that, that we can get better at, and we got to focus on that. Down in Chicago, uh, Mike was asked about the impact Tanner Lee might have on their offense, their quarterback, and obviously had some struggles early with interceptions, but had a good game at Illinois. Have you looked at what he has brought to their offense in particular this last game against Illinois? Yeah, and I think that, you know, the Illinois game, I don't know, but just in looking at it, that, um, you know, it's coming together. But I thought he brought a lot to it. He's, I think he's a really good football player, and and I think they've got – a lot of skill around him, and and therefore, you know, that's a pretty good combination. And, and again, I think we'll be tested a little bit differently this week than maybe we have to this point in the season. But I think he's a good quarterback. That um, I think he's you know continuing to get more comfortable in the system. You know, he was there last year and and knows it, and and with the guys. And I think he's I think it's you know he's he brings a lot to it. Quick follow up. When you say test a little bit differently, you talk about the ability to throw the ball down the field vertically, or and I think the combination of him, their receivers. You know, I think it's a it's a different offense that we're that we're facing. And you know, last week I thought we played against a good quarterback, but I think this will be a it's a different offense, and therefore I think it'll be a different test. Well, Wisconsin always seems to rank near the top of the national rankings in time of possession. I was wondering kind of how that affects the game when you guys are able to keep the ball a lot and keep your defense off the field. Yeah, I think time of possession is a uh, stat that's truly a byproduct of, um, you know, it's a, it's a team stat in the sense if, if your offense is holding on, getting first downs, and defense is getting the opponent off the field, you know, time of possession itself is – it's not a stat that leads to winning or losing. You know, good football leads to winning and losing. And if you can take one stat, it's it's the takeaways and turnovers. And that's, you know, where we got to be better in protecting the football. And, and every time we get a chance for a takeaway, if we can get it, those are big. But time of possession, I think it's just a byproduct of the way games play out, but not – doesn't correlate to winning and losing necessarily. Well, I think before this season, you were asked about having a more explosive offense this year, big plays. You guys are doing a better job yards per play. What factors have you seen that have led to that improvement, at least so far this year? I think that, you know, guys guys have been making some plays. You know, uh, I can think back to some of the long runs that we've had. And you know, there's certainly been some where, uh, you know, comes to mind and, you know, breaking through and, and both receivers getting a block on safeties and, and letting it happen. And then, you know, comes to mind where we block no one and a guy makes five guys miss. You know, so I think that, um, you know, we didn't set out this fall to say, okay, we need more big plays. This is how we've got to do it. I think that big plays come as a byproduct of executing and then there's also those times when guys just make plays, make a guy miss, make a couple guys miss. Well, Jazz Peavy's production probably isn't where he hoped it would be when the season started. What's your assessment of um, what's transpired with, with him in the offense? Um, is it just more players around him or something else? Yeah, I think that's a, a little bit of it. You know, I mean, we still – really think Jazz is a good player and, and we need him to be good. And yet, you know, there is, you know, three other receivers that have been doing well and, and along with, you know, Jazz and, and then, you know, tight ends have been part of it. And then there's been some games where we've been able to run the football, you know, so I think those, they come. There's there's not a uh, anything that's, Jazz has done to say he's not get that, and, and it'll come for him. And he's got to be ready when those opportunities come and continue to keep working to get better. Well, uh, along those lines, sometimes when a player's a senior, he's hoping for that big monster year. Has Jazz handled that? 
well in your opinion? I think he's, you, you know, working through that at times, and, and yet I think that he knows, um, he knows that some of his games have been kind of those bunches games, and and you love that each one of these players I think have a expectation, a vision of what they want that year to be, and and you know we're a quarter way into it, and he's got a lot of football ahead, and and. But I think he's handling it the right way as far as continuing to work. And, and I think he's smart enough to know that it'll come. You know, and it's hard because you can't – I don't care what position you're playing, you got to let the game come to you. And, and when those opportunities do come, you got to take advantage of them. When, when you look at your secondary, um, it's maybe for the first time in a long time or ever here, you have legitimate speed almost at every position. Uh, will you agree with that, first of all? And secondly, how has that affected the way you play defense? I do. I do think that we've got good speed in the in the secondary, and it certainly helped, you know, moving Natrell to safety and, and uh, you know, Jazz, I mean, uh, Dakota, boy, he triggered on that, that last play. And and then our corners, you know, we do feel like, you know, they can run. And, and so um, I think – the speed alone isn't what gives you confidence. It's we think that they're pretty good players. Now I think that we'll be tested this week, unlike any week that we've been tested in the back end, and that's good for them, you know. And, and yet I think we have a chance. I think we're doing some really good things in the secondary. I think we got to keep working. We got to keep getting better, and we know that the level of play will get will raise up, and we've got to continue to raise our level. Do you expect to have Troy uh, back this week? And then Taiwan is, is listed as questionable for the first time this season. Um, where, where does he stand in things right now? Well, I think, you know, like Troy, I think, you know, we'll see. He feels better certainly today than he did a week ago at this time. You know, so it'll be as the week progresses. And Taiwan, you know, just started doing some individual. So we'll see what he can handle. Um, too early to tell on, on Taiwan for sure. And, and Troy will just see each day. Brian. Paul, how much do you think Dakota Dixon has helped um, develop or in the development of Natrell uh, at the safety position? I think all the guys impact each other. You know, it's a good group that way. And and certainly, you know, there's nothing like a player, you know, as Dakota went through it and it's pretty fresh in his mind. All right, you know, this is what got me or this is, I see what you're saying um, and I think that, you know, Jimmy does a great job. And, and in the end, Trell's a guy that's, you know, he's, he's a person that will do anything for this team. And you see it, you know, from the way he approaches special teams to, you know, bouncing around, playing corner, playing the nickel. You know, when he was a receiver, I'll go to corner, you know, all that. So I think Trell gets most of the credit for the development, but he's got great resources. Dakota's certainly one of them. Jimmy's one, the other, you know, Joe Ferguson. I mean, you got a lot of guys that that want to help him. And uh, most of all, I think Trell wants to be as good as he can be. He works. Jason. Paul, you, uh, you guys in Nebraska are the only two in, in the West that, that haven't dropped a conference game yet. D does this matchup maybe carry a little more weight than you would normally see from, from the matchup this earlier in the season? No, in the sense that it's a huge game and, and – always going to be and it's the game we got this week and and none of the what's happened before or what's happened later none of it matters it's it's all about focusing on this week and, and we know it's a good team and it's a talented team and well coached team and, and we've got to we've got to play well and I think we've got to get better as a team to give ourselves our best chance but none of the peripheral stuff matters it's it's all about this game stands on its own well, it's not often that a program offers a scholarship to a long snapper. Um, what what did you see in Adam when you were evaluating him, and, and what's your assessment of how he's done here in these first four games? Well, I think, you know, he's certainly, as a freshman, done some good, and, and there's areas that he's got to get better. And, you know, um, we got 85 of them to, to give, and, and we want to – we've always had, you know, a long snapper on scholarship, and, and we thought that Adam was worth it. And, and feel good about what he's done, but he, like all of us, have to continue to get better. Jim. Paul, this Nebraska defense had some bumpy moments early in the season. I don't know how much you've dived into 
them yet and haven't watched all the games. But what have you seen lately from that defense? And, and, and do you think some of that's just getting used to a new system and becoming more comfortable with that? I think there's part of that getting used to, you know, maybe being asked to do something a little bit differently. And and yet I think that it's a, you can see their development, their growth, and I think they're playing at a confident level right now, it looks like to me. And, uh, and, and so I don't know how they've gotten to this point, but when you put on the tape, especially as you see them progress through the season, it, it's, it's a good defense and we've got to, we've got to play well to give ourselves a chance on it. Paul, when, when PJ Rosowski got injured and you had to go to Zach Hintz, did you expect Zach to be able to perform at the level he has? I know it's not a full season, but I mean, right. his numbers are pretty impressive. No, Zach's done a nice job and, um, you know, he's, He's been around, and so we, there's nothing that he's doing that we haven't seen. But you don't know how guys are going to react in games, and and that you appreciate what he's done and and needs to continue to do. And and hopefully, you know, PJ, he's getting better. Hopefully, he gets better. But Zach's taking advantage of an opportunity, and it's that's pretty fun to see. Anything else for coach? All right. Thank you. All right.